don't know if you're comfortable with an in-person thing or if we're going to do it virtually again. It probably makes it easier for people to get to it if it's virtual. Yeah. Um, I'm open to whatever you think. I mean, I would like to continue it. Right. I know I I've just been, you know, crazy. Uh, this, this fall has just been insane. So I don't know if we just want to put the date out there for January and kick it sort of thing. Um, well, I we're know I your be- schedule. You're, you're the one that's got the, I mean, like I need certain, di- I need to know which day, um, but, and maybe we okay. should wait. Yeah. I have to see what Suffolk's going to offer me. I am currently working though every morning, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. Every Thursday, morning. Friday. Yeah. I work at the, um, the Huntington Historical Society now. Wow. Do you yeah, like it? I do. You know, I'm doing administrative stuff. It's not a big deal. I mean, I, I can't kind of geek out on all that stuff. So it's not a problem. And it's steady. It's I know my hours. It's 10 minutes away. So it's a nice office. And it's, you know, it's got a pretty good mission, right? So I kind of feel like it's, it's a good fit right now. Um, I'm going to go live. Yes. Okay, go. Let people in. Yeah, we'll talk. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, I see a lot of people jumped right on. So that's great. This is a pretty exciting program. So um, welcome. Um, I am going to go ahead and put a question in the chat just to get everyone comfortable using the chat. Um, So you'll be able to see and hear the presenter tonight, Regina, but we cannot see or hear you. So the best way to communicate is to use the chat box, which is located at the bottom of your screen. There's a little icon that says chat. So I'm going to welcome everyone to the program. And um, if you could type if you've ever grown garlic before, we'd love to kind of get a sense of who has done this or if you are doing this at the same time or for the first time. So if you're looking for where to put the chat in, right? Um, oh yeah, I just had it. It's over. If you if you roll on my computer, if I go to the bottom of my screen, there's a more, and then there's a three little dots, and then I click up on chat. It's the very top thing. Yeah, I guess it's a slightly different on everyone's screen. She like is always making updates, but that's okay. We've all become pretty flexible with <laughs> things changing a lot uh, yeah. over the, the past year or so. Okay, so I see that we have some Karen and Heather have never grown garlic before, so there you'll you'll learn a lot tonight. Uh, I think this is the second time we've offered this program. No, second time in. Uh, virtual, and I think we did it one time in person as well. Okay. It's always very popular, so we're happy to offer it again. <clears throat> Amber, just just give me a sanity check here. Can you see the chat box up here? on my screen or is that hidden? You just see my presentation. Correct, I don't see the chat box. So you can awesome. certainly have that up as well. That's yep. great, that's great. But love to eat it, awesome. Yeah, easy to grow. Oh. We have returnees, converts oh, to yes. growing. 
Yes, I attended the program last year as well, and I grew the garlic, which was great in my garden. But you know, I kind of forgot. I forgot a lot of the things you said, Regina, so I could absolutely use a refresher too. I know it's pretty straightforward, but then there's a lot of stuff that can also help with the process. So I could definitely use hearing this again. Great. Well, I'm going to get going as soon as you say, Amber. So Okay. It's 632. Um, it looks like we have a good amount of people in here. Um, one thing I can say is that this program is recorded and is available for the uh, next two weeks if you have to refer back to the PowerPoint slides. So that's always helpful. Um, and I know um, Regina is always very forthcoming with all her information is willing to share. So just let us know if there's something that you need. And I know she will say yes and send it your way. So let's go ahead and get started because we want to be um, mindful of the time. And I know there's a lot of content in this presentation. So Regina, whenever you're ready, go ahead and take it away. And just as a reminder, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, to use the chat box. And if you raise your hand as we get into discussion, we can certainly unmute you and you could just ask your question um, over the microphone as well. So that option um, is available as well. I know sometimes there's something that you just can't type, you want to tell a story or something. So if time permits, we can certainly have that option as well. Okay, oops, I, I do this every time. Okay, so, well, thank you. Uh, I wanna thank Amber again for the, um, the opportunity to give this class, this program. If this is just one of the best things you could possibly do is grow your own garlic, especially if you're an organic grower and you know how expensive gar organic garlic can be. Um, it's really satisfying. It's easy to grow. It's, it's basically one thing I would never not grow. I, you know, if I had to crawl over nails to get my garlic, I would to, to plant, I would do it. Um, and certainly you can save your own seed, but we'll talk about why or why not, um, in a few minutes. So, um, as Amber said, um, there's a chat box. You could put your questions in. You can raise your hand. The only thing I would just ask is that if the question is unrelated to what I've just said, please hold it to the end. I'm very happy to answer questions, as many questions about whatever you need within the time frame we have. Um, and certainly, if you have questions after the program, Amber will go ahead and then, you know she'll send those off to me, and I, I'll be happy to help. So a little bit about me. Um, my name is Regina. My last name is Deluco Kensky. I'm uh, the founder of Seedsoa Farm. I'm a little market garden uh, operation. I'm also a librarian, and I did start the first seed library in Nassau County at Glencoe Public Library in 2017. And out of that came all of these programs that I thought would be good to teach people how to grow things from seed to seed. And garlic is just a, a natural um, fit into growing your own. So that's what we're going to talk about today, growing your own garlic. So really, I'm going to kind of breeze through some of this just in the interest of time. But um, garlic is really one of the oldest horticultural crops known. I mean, Babylonians grew it 4,500 years ago, Chinese 2,000 years ago. It grows wild only in Central Asia. And those would be those countries that I have listed below. Um, we have cultivated many varieties since the beginning of uh, of um, horticulture. So that is, uh, that's why we have so many different varieties out there with, with all these different claims. There are arguments out there that there are only a few varieties and people are just getting creative with their marketing. But, um, you know, the reality is if you find a variety that you like, there's no reason not to just embrace it. So initially soft neck garlic was predominant and I'll talk about the differences between hard neck and soft neck. But evidence of hard neck garlic was found in Jordan in, in Egyptian tombs. Um, and the distinction between hard neck and soft neck only happened about a thousand years ago, just yesterday, a thousand years ago. Um, uh, um, in 1989, most of the varieties came over with the fall of the Soviet Union, and a few varieties came over with Polish and German and Italian immigrants prior to that. There are so many benefits to eating garlic. Um, and there's historical evidence that uh, ancient civilizations used it to treat a myriad of, <clears throat> of um, ailments. And um, today there's benefit, there's be there are health benefits that have um, been 
been having support through peer reviewed studies, in fact, um, that show that garlic, the evidence of garlic is lower, it can lower your blood pressure and cholesterol. It has an anti-inflammatory effect. Um, it can reduce your risk of cancer and it can help you build a stronger immune system. When you use garlic, it's best to chop it or smash it and wait a few minutes to release that, um, that helpful component before uh, cooking it. Even touching it, I think, would probably be beneficial to you because if you think about the fact that your hands, your skin is your biggest organ and things absorb through your skin, you're going to get a benefit just from touching it and working with it. Um, so when garlic is chopped, there are these sulfur compounds that, that are produced. Um, they're antifungal and antibacterial. And I don't know about you, but I was eating a lot of garlic back in uh, the beginning of this, this perpetuating COVID situation we're in. Because I thought, well, it's antibacterial, it's antifungal, it's, it's antimicrobial. Why not just keep your immune system in great shape? Allicin is that unstable compound that is briefly available in fresh garlic after it's been cut or crushed. Um, and allicin is, allicin is uh, responsible for that lowering of lipids, anti-blood coagulation, anti-hypertension, anti-cancer, um, and all of these other things, anti-inflammatory. And you'll see here, it gives you a certain percentage of um, daily needs, micro and macronutrients. And here's just a nice little visual. And this is from an actual study from uh, the journal... Oh, the journal, oh gosh, did I not write it? Anti antioxidants, that's the name of the journal. And it shows you a visual of all the different benefits that you get from utilizing garlic in your diet. It handles inflammation, a bone disease, metabolic disorder, which if you didn't know what that is, metabolic disorder is basically a uh, weight gain that kind of screws, screws up your whole system, which includes, which will also result in diabetic uh, issues. It's an antioxidant and it's, it's good for cardiovascular disease. And I, I, I would say, I should have said this at the beginning, if you want to read this study and if you see anything on the screen that you kind of want to investigate further, um, take a picture of it. If you have a camera handy or um, maybe an iPad, you can quickly take a picture of it. But if you're interested, I can always forward this information to Amber as well. So a little bit of vocabulary about garlic. Um, garlic, seed garlic versus table stock versus garlic flower seed, which is known as bubble, bubbles. Um, and I actually had a little bowl of it here. What did I do with that? I messed the, I moved them away. Oh, well, I can't show you where the bubble is, but I have a picture of it. So seed garlic is suitable for growing on into garlic that you harvest from your garden. Um, the intact heads, um, which I'm going to see if you can see what I'm doing here. I should probably try to unshare, but uh, the intact heads are considered a uh, uh, intact cloves where it's like this. This is considered a head of garlic. And you would separate these cloves off of this head before planting. Um, they're generally about two to three inches in diameter. And this one is pretty big. I don't know if you can see, but I can take a tape measure and I can see it's almost three and a half inches in diameter, which is a great size. The smaller the, clo the head, the smaller the clove, the smaller the, the bulb you'll wind up with. So you always want to plant the largest ones. You could also use this if you had bought way too much garlic and didn't know what to do with it. Now it's like January and you have too much garlic. You could certainly eat this. This is edible. This is, it's no different really, except that it has some uh, other things about the size and other reasons uh, that I'll talk about in a moment about disease, you know, and any kind of microbial problems that have hopefully certified disease free and see, and, um, and nematode free. And I'll talk about that in a moment. This is another variety. Um, I'll show you in a minute. This is an artichoke variety, but also you can see the size of this. It's about three inches in diameter. If you put something very small in the ground, you're going to spend a lot of time planting very small cloves. And that's going to take a lot of uh, time and effort to get a small head. And that those are kind of a pain in the neck to cook with, in my opinion. I like the really big ones because I like just taking a couple of well, uh, cloves and smashing it up. So one clove of garlic will grow into one head of garlic if you grow it out properly. Table stock is the garlic that you buy in the grocery store. It tends to be smaller in size. Um, it might possibly harbor a persistent pest or disease that will appear later in storage. It's perfectly fine to eat, but it's not meant to be put into the ground. And I'll talk about that in a minute. 
Um, and there's always a potential lack of hardiness depending on the origin. So if it's garlic that's been grown in a very mild climate and shipped in from someplace, it's not going to survive our set, zone seven uh, winters. Um, the bulbils are actually what I have at the top here. Get myself out of here. Um, it's like it's the top of the flower. It, it's it's actually when when the garlic goes to flower and it looks pretty similar to this, although this is an allium. Uh, this is actually a leek flower. It will look similar to this in that it'll grow a big flower on top. The bulbul is actually um, this little thing that develops into like very small, probably the size of a pea, little garlic seeds. And those garlic seeds uh, you could plant for sure. Um, but what's going to happen is it's going to take a number of years for you to get it to the size where it's worth peeling and cooking with, right? Um, so that's always a potential, especially if you have a lot, you have a lot of those. Although I would recommend that when you're growing a garlic, a hard neck garlic, which is, which is what this is, it had the flower at the top that you pop that off and eat that garlic scape. The garlic scape is basically the, the flower, the flower stem, the flower stalk, and that will help um, with the size of your garlic later on. Oops. Regina. Yes. Hi, I just, we have a quick question about the benefits before you move forward. Sure. Um, somebody was asking if the uh, powdered garlic would have the same benefits that you named in the previous slide, or if it's really fresh garlic. I think only. it's fresh garlic or, or garlic that's been um, processed in a way that heat hasn't totally decimated. I don't know the process by which they make garlic powder. I don't know if it's dried naturally in the air and if some of those benefits remain in that garlic powder. I'm not really an expert on garlic powder, um, but certainly you could look it up. You could see there are people who buy garlic cap garlic capsules and I and they're supposed to have a benefit um, for all of these benefits. But remember, garlic uh, anything any kind of supplement like that isn't really. Um, it's not really regulated by the government. So you could be buying just, no, you know, nothing. You're spending, you're wasting your money. So when in doubt, go with the real stuff, go with the real garlic. Um, I can't answer that question. Sorry, but I'm going to guess it really just depends on how it's processed. If it's just left out to dry in a warm environment and it's drying down naturally, I would guess that there might be some silk properties left to it. But if it's put into an oven and, and dry down very quickly, I would imagine that those, benefits are dissipating. Okay, I hope that answered the question. I think that's a great answer. Thank you, Regina. Great. Oh, you're welcome. So um, there, are there are several types of garlics. Uh, true garlic belongs to the species Allium sativum. And the two subspecies, as I mentioned before, are the hard neck variety, which is this one. It's got, you can actually kind of see it's hard to like, it's a hard neck, I can't bend it or the soft neck variety, and there are many types of those. Uh, the soft neck include the silver skin and artichoke types. This happens to be an artichoke type. This is an inchellium red. Uh, the garlic, if you signed up and you got your garlic for the program, you got the, you've got a hard neck variety, which means you're gonna wanna keep your eye out for that garlic scape so you can harvest it in the, in, in the early, it's probably early, um, early summer, you'll see that. Maybe not even summer, it might be late, late spring, like June, June 4th, something like that. This is variety is actually called music. We got this from a local farm. If you're interested in more of it and uh, you, you feel like you wanna grow a lot more garlic than what you got at this program, I have resources for that at the end. Um, so the silver skin and artichoke types are these, Blanco, Pienza, Piacenza, Corsican Red, and Chilean Red, that's this one, Silver Rose, Silver White, French Red, and there's bazillions more. Those are just a few examples. The benefit to this kind of garlic in the commercial industry is that it can be planted using mechanical methods. It's predominantly found in supermarkets um, and it's braidable. If, if, you, if I had one and I don't, I don't know what I did with all of my soft neck garlic last year. I don't think it did very well is what I think happened. Um, you could actually take the, the stem that's like this, right? But it's soft and you can actually make a braid if you're handy. I am not a handy person, however. Um, so this is an image of the Inchellium red. You can kind of see why they call it an artichoke type. There are cloves around the outside and then big cloves around the outside and smaller cloves on the inside. Uh, this happens to be a really nice variety of garlic. This is the only other 
variety I grow besides German Hardy or music, which is what you guys got with the program if you were lucky enough, and um, the Inchellium Red. So the hard neck variety is just that. You can see in this image that it's got this, if you take out those first few cloves, it's got this very stiff in, inner um, center. Um, and again, there's varieties of those. There's porcelain types, which is music is in the porcelain variety, the purple stripe, broken bowl. Someday we're gonna have a garlic tasting, I hope, and we'll be able to tell you the differences in flavor. Uh, I'm not sure I'm that much of a, of a gourmand to care, but um, there are definitely varying levels of spiciness and um, other elements that people claim in these different varieties. Music has been like one of the hardest ones to get. It's because it's got some lore behind it about it being extra healthy for you. I don't know if that lore is true, but it is a great variety to grow and it's, it does very well here on Long Island. So hard neck, like I said, has a scape or a stalk and that's what you're looking at here. Let me move myself. I'm not sure if you can see me or just hear me or what, but you can see here at the bottom picture, that is the beginning of the flower stalk starting. They start off, they curl. Um, and then as time goes on, they lignify and go straight up. And at that point, that flower at the top, which is the very, very top part of that image, um, would start to swell and the pollinators would come by and do their thing. And then you'd wind up with those bulbs we just saw. Um, the hard neck skate is edible while it's still young. Um, and that's in that curly stage, but it will develop that seed head if it's pollinated. You don't really want that to happen because what happens is just like anybody any other thing that puts all its energy into a child, a project, it diminishes from the actual uh, bulb itself. It will take energy from the bulb and it will put it into that flower making, which is if you're in the, if you're in the, the game to make more garlic, gar garlic bulbils, but oh, that's so hard to say, I should have practiced that. Um, then yeah, certainly let it go to, go to um, seed and let it go to flower and let the pollinators do their thing. But if you want just the garlic to eat and you want a good size head of garlic, you're going to want to pop that off. And as I said, it's edible. It's really delicious. Just don't leave them in your refrigerator and forget to do anything with them. I don't know how to do that. Okay. So the soft neck varieties you can harvest um, at a couple of stages. You can harvest it at a green garlic stage. And that's the image you're seeing here on the right. That's garlic that's not quite created its its cloves yet it's still one big bulb it's very very sought after in some markets and it's really delicious and certainly if you ever grew garlic in the past and didn't get all of your garlic out come the spring you're going to see garlic coming up in spots that you did not plant it last year or this year so next year i'm sure i'm going to find garlic in my garden and I can do one of two things. I can harvest it when it's really, really small. I can harvest it when it's a little larger like this. But the benefit is I get garlic like earlier in the season. Um, and again, with the soft neck variety, you'll be able to harvest it as garlic. The benefits to soft necks are they are longer storage life. I've had Inchellium Red for like almost a year. I mean, not almost a year, but I would say a good nine months. And it's still in great shape, which is great if you're growing it to cook with it. Um, it's got a milder flavor. And as I said before, you can breed it. The hard neck varieties give you one more opportunity to harvest. You can harvest it at this green garlic stage, which is what we are looking at on the right. You can harvest those garlic scapes and use them as you would use garlic. Um, and then you can, of course, harvest it as garlic. So you got a couple of more options with, with the hard neck variety. It has a good storage life. The music happens to have a very good storage life, which is one of the reasons why I grow it. And it's got full flavor. So oh, here you can see, this is the garlic scape that now you can see it's, it's at the top of that stalk, it's straight up. You can see how now these bulbs are starting to form. Those are the flower, flower heads and the bees and the pollinators will come by and pollinate it. And you can almost see that lighter pink color in the inside are those that have been pollinated. And now they're, they're those little bulbs that you can plant and wait three years to get a decent sized garlic from. So when are you gonna plant your garlic? You're gonna plant it about now. Um, I used to plant it closer to the mid-November, but I'm starting to become more of a convert to plant a little earlier. Um, so it's really a matter of what the weather is going to be like. You don't want to plant it too early and you don't want to plant it too late. If you plant it too early, you'll get too much growth. And remember the growth that comes up out of that clove, this is the, this is the clove is where the garlic is um, storing its energy to send up that green shoot. That green shoot is going to be doing all of the work once it's up. 
And that's going to be doing all the photosynthesis, which will take that energy and bring it back down to the, to the, to the, um, the bulb under the ground. If you plant it too early and you get too much green growth and we get a really cold winter, that green growth might get knocked out by the cold, by the freezing. So if that's the case, then what else does the garlic have to work with? It has nothing. You're going to not get garlic out of it. You don't want to also plant it too late because what you want is to have it start to set, set some roots into the ground to really give it a good start in the spring. Um, and, and I think I have pushed the envelope a little bit and I'm going to try this year to plant it a little bit earlier and see what the difference is. But if you plant it a little too late, it's probably not going to have that robust root system and maybe moisture will become too much of an issue and rot it. When you plant your garlic, you're going to um, take it apart. Um, let me see. This is, yeah, I'm going to just, yeah, I'm going to take apart one that I actually grew. And um, this is a hard neck. And actually, I'm not going to take that one apart because I want to show you something else on it. I'm going to take this one apart because it's going to be easier. It's they're kind of a little tough to take apart sometimes. And I want to show you something else about that before I do that. So you're going to plant a single clove, right? This is going to go in the ground with the flat side down into the ground, about two to four inches, two to three inches deep. The pointy part's going to stay on top, and that's where your, your shoot is going to emanate from. You're going to plant it in full, well-drained, rich soil. And if you're planning to plant more garlic than what you've got in your hands, you're going to want to order it early in the season. Um, there are some options I can tell you about at the, a little later on in the program. But um, I have been finding that garlic has been selling out like in the beginning of July. And there was a time when you can order garlic in August or even September and be able to get it. But, it, but, it, but it's become so popular because it is such a terrific thing to grow and people have really started to they're starting to realize this is a terrific crop that you can grow, really don't have to do much to grow it. Um, and so it's getting very popular. And so it's, it's harder to find as the season progresses. Now, I think I talk about it later on, but you don't want to just go to the grocery store and buy it. And there's a number of reasons for that. One of which is that you just don't know where it's grown. So that it could very well have been grown in a very warm climate and it's not going to make it through our winter. It could be that table stock I was talking about that might have these latent diseases in them or even these small micro, microscopic organisms that will keep it from actually coming to full size. And it will also per, create a persistent problem in your soil where you'll never be able to grow garlic in there for like 20 something years. And you don't want to do that. So I have this little video. I'm hoping if I just click on video, I never know if this is going to work, that it's just going to go to it. But it's a very quick little video about how to grow garlic. You can see how simple it is. So let's give this a shot. Let me get this guy out of here. Oh, of course, it's going to take forever. Here we go. I'm probably going to have to watch a commercial. Are you, are you all seeing, Amber, are you seeing the screen with the video trying to load? If you're a garlic lover who's been settling for the same old store uh -oh. bought commercial cloves and you have no idea what you're missing, there's a whole world of exotic garlics ready for you to grow right at home in your garden. You can certainly plant your garlic in the spring, but in many areas, you'll get larger cloves, healthier plants, and overall better results if you plant these cold hardy root vegetables in the fall. One of the best benefits of fall planted garlic is that it starts the growth process that will be completed the following summer. Garlic is very hardy, and many varieties just won't perform well unless they're subjected to harsh winter weather conditions. We plant fall garlic so that the cloves have plenty of time to establish good rooting before the freezing weather conditions set in. Don't worry if your garlic develops a little green growth before winter sets in. They'll be just fine. A well-established root system will help your garlic to jump out of the ground at the first signs of spring. Now let's show you how 
to plant your garlic. The bulbs that we'll be using over here today were produced specifically for home garden use. Garlic bulbs are made up of many different cloves. When you receive your garlic, you'll want to leave this intact until you're ready to plant it out in the garden. When you're ready to plant, be sure to remove the papery outer covering called the tunic. Each clove will form an entirely new bulb of garlic. Make sure that you start with rich, pliable soil that you've worked plenty of compost into. Dig individual holes or trenches to a depth of about three to four inches. You should plant the cloves about six inches apart. Make sure that you properly orient your cloves in the planting hole. The flat bottom faces downwards and the tapered tip points to the sky. A great tool to make planting easier is what I've been using here. It's called a dibbler. Cover with soil. I always like to add a bit of mulch to help control temperature swings and prevent soil drying. That's all you have to do. Just sit back, wait for spring to come, and watch your garlic start to sprout. Okay, so um, that's, that's as easy as it can get, right? So um, as she said, it's, you can, you can grow, grow anywhere from four to six inches apart. The more space you give your garlic, uh, the more, uh, the bigger the clove might be. You don't want to crowd it too much because you definitely want those plants to have some air circulation behind them, around them when they do start to grow. That little bit of green growth is absolutely fine. That will withstand really cold freezing temperatures. You just don't want like six inches of growth. That might not make it. So, although I've seen people's gardens at my community garden and they plant the garlic like in September and I have somebody who swears by growing, for planting it in September and uh, they look like they're going to get fried, but they seem to do fine. But why risk it? So when she says take off the outer paper covering, she's meaning around the entire, she's meaning about the, she's talking about the bulb, not the each piece. You do not have to take the gut, the, the, the paper off of each clove. That's going to just de decompose in the soil. So um, you definitely want to amend your soil. If you can amend it with compost or something slow uh, release like that, that's the best bet. Um, you want to make sure your soil has good drainage and compost will help with that. It'll help with both drainage and um, retaining moisture, but not too much moisture. Um, you want to keep your garden, your garlic weed free. And so your best method is to mulch. Um, I like to use leaves or straw. Uh, you can plant it into weed cloth if you want. Weed, um, you know, weed cover cloth, that cloth that's got air and, and the ability of air and water to penetrate through. We're not talking plastic. We're talking about that kind of very tightly meshed uh, landscaping cloth. You can use that too. If you are using straw, be sure you're using straw. Do not use hay. Hay is a, is a grass and it will leave seeds behind and it'll give you a weed problem for, for eons to come. So make sure it's straw. You can drive around the neighborhood after Halloween and Thanksgiving and probably grab it for free. There's lots of straw out there. And you probably wanna go about an inch or two deep. And the same thing with, with leaves. I love leaves because leaves are really just nature's blanket. And uh, we have them readily here um, coming out of, falling off of all the deciduous trees. And it's just a waste to, to send it away. I use straw. I use leaves because it's fr they're free. They're, uh, I have a friend who gives me his, his straw, his uh, leaves every year. He chops them up for me. I, have, I treat them like my, my children. They're just so valuable to me because they do a great job of keeping weeds down. And they add uh, carbon back into the soil, which is what the microorganisms really appreciate. They need carbon uh, to survive. So um, you want to mulch, though, probably sometime after a, a freeze, you know, because you don't want to be holding, uh, you don't want to put it on too soon because it will kind of mess around with the temperature of the soil and it'll heave up and you don't want that. You want your garlic to stay in the ground. Um, let me get this out of here. Oh, sorry. I just got to get rid of this. I don't know how I did this. this thing can't go away. Go away. All right. I can't. All right. So garlic can also be grown um, in containers when you can, when you have adequate moisture, adequate drainage, sunlight, and nutrients. 
And um, if you are in a tight spot and you don't have a great spot for your garlic and you want full sun and you don't have it, this is a great option. Just make sure your garlic is, I'm gonna have to look at myself again so I make sure you can see what I'm talking about. Make sure your, your, your planter is at least, you know, 12 to 18 inches deep. Width doesn't matter, but since you're gonna be planting them four to six inches apart, you probably want a good size uh, diameter as well. But depth is really important because that root system has to reach down. It has to pull the nutrients and it also has to, you know, it's going to form a nice, really good size root system if, if, it's health, if it's healthy and it's doing well. And you want to give it that opportunity. Let's do this. Okay. So when do you plant it? Um, you plant it around now. I would say probably no later than mid-November. Um, so when, you're, when you've planted your garlic in the fall and early winter, what is actually happening under the ground is the garlic is starting to set those roots. And as the video pointed out, those roots are gonna be really instrumental in your plant really taking off come the, the spring because that's when it's really gonna start growing. Just gonna drop that down. Um, in early winter to late winter, you'll see some top growth and that's okay. As this woman said in the video as well, a couple of inches is okay. It's going to survive any kind of cold weather, but you don't want a ton of it. In late winter, early spring, there's additional growth happening. It's all temperature dependent. It depends on how mild our winter is, how, how cold it is. It's like a tulip, you know, if you've ever, or like a daffodil. If you, and in fact, it's in the same family as a lily family garlic. If you ever went out in like early April, March, and you saw some of your daffodils coming up and you're like, oh, my daffodils are coming up. And then it gets really cold. They kind of just stop. So it's going to all work with, with the weather, how warm it is, how warm the soil is in terms of its growth. Um, in early spring, the plant's going to start resuming vigorous growth. It's really going to start growing by leaps and bounds. And in late spring, early summer, this is your opportunity to start harvesting that green garlic. You know, those cloves that you didn't get out of the ground last year, that are going to pop up all over the place. This is a great time to grab them out. Um, it's a good idea to take them too, because they're going to interfere with your planting of other things. And the garlic scapes, which is that flower that you're going to pop off. And when you do your garlic, you're going to, when you do your garlic, um, do harvest it. This is where the scape was. You're just gonna snap it at the base of the scape. So this is the step, stalk of the garlic. And this was really what's left, of, not really what's left of the scape, but this is where you pop it off, right at the base of that scape. Um, and then around June, end of June, you kind of want to take a look. And usually the garlic scapes, I think they usually come around a month before I harvest. So it's usually like June 4th, first week of June. Around the end of June, you're going to pull a bulb up to see if the cloves have started to form. You want to see like the definition of those bulb, of those cloves so that you know that it's heading in the right direction. And then around July 4th, you're going to harvest your garlic. One of the best ways, and you can't really tell by this, to really know, you don't want the whole thing to dry down because if you do that, what often happens is you go to pull it up and it fall, breaks apart in the ground. You don't want this top part of the garlic to start to decompose or have any kind of uh, water or anything go in there because that will help it decompose because the garlic isn't there for us to harvest. It's there to reproduce itself. So it's going to go ahead and do that. So when the bottom three or four leaves are starting to dry down, they're totally dry down, that is your time to kind of think about pulling your garlic. I like to try to do it. Uh, so sorry, I always do that. Um, oops. Well, I'll talk about that in a minute. So right now I'm going to talk about diseases of garlic and why you don't want to be planting garlic that is not, um, that's not certified disease free. There's this disease called ripe, ripe rot. Uh, it will persist in your soil. It became a really big problem in 2016. So wherever you're getting your garlic from, you need to be sure that they're going to be testing it to make sure it's free of this. And when I tell you it's an issue, it's an issue for me. I grew some garlic one year. I don't think it was tested properly. And I have a perpetual problem now in the, the best growing space I have at my community garden. I can't grow garlic there. So this year I'm doing a whole reorg in my backyard so I can get my raised beds into a sunnier spot so I can grow them here. It's really a heartbreak. And what you're going to see when you have a problem with your garlic is before the scape really starts to develop, uh, starts to come out of the top of the hard neck garlic, you're going to see that the leaves are a little bit yellowing. And, you're, and that's not normal. That's not normal senescence. Uh, senescence starts to happen more like in July, end of June. This is happening earlier than that. 
Um, and then basically what you're seeing on the top is meaning that the root system is not supporting that leaf anymore. There's no more exchange of uh, nutrients going on. So this is what it looks like. It's ugly. Um, it's a heartbreak. And you can see the root system is really affected there too. So you want to just make sure that if you buy garlic, that it's, it's going to be disease. It's going to be certified disease free of white rot. The next one you need to think about is botrytis. This one happens to really enjoy favorable, uh, cold, uh, wet conditions, too much irrigation. You know, you can't do anything about mother nature, but I have a tendency not to irrigate my garlic in the fall and the spring. Um, nature gives it enough. If it's extremely dry, I might give it water. And if it's in containers, you'll want to give it water. Don't make the mistake of under irrigating your container plants. Your container plants, remember, can't reach into the ground like root systems can when they're, when they're free of any kind of barrier to the ground to get more water. Um, it can also happen if you give it excessive nitrogen fertilization. Well, if you're using compost, you're not gonna really want run into that problem because nitrogen in compost is tightly held to the particles of the compost and the plant will only take what it needs. So um, it's more common in heavy soils. Like I have clay soil, um, you would want to amend that with compost to lighten it up and also increase, uh, you know, its, its ability to um, drain. This is the fungus that calls it Bartritis pori. Um, it infects mature plants through the neck. It looks pretty similar in some respect, in respects in that it's done, your plant's dying off a little sooner. Um, and you definitely have a problem if you see this. And what I would do is I would pull it all I pull it all and hope for the best and hope that there's something to harvest. Maybe it's green garlic, you know, and that's what I would do. I would not let it persist in the soil. You're going to wind up with nothing. Final one is garlic float nematode. This is a microscopic roundworm that is, is a very big problem. It's the biggest problem we have because it moves on equipment. It moves all over the country. And uh, that's why when you're buying garlic in the grocery store, you could easily have garlic with garlic bloat nematode in it, they're microscopic, they don't do any damage really to the to, to it in a short term, but in the long term, you're going to see the same kind of thing, this yellowing of leaves, the stunting and premature defoliation. So these are your top really three plants that you don't want to, uh, th three diseases that you do not want to bring into your garden. And these things, again, they stay in the soil for a long, long time. So if you ever wanted to plant garlic in that spot again, you're really out of luck. So prevention is your management tool here. And that's the most important thing you can do is to buy seed that's certified disease free of these, these three problems. Um, and so you will want to look at the site, make sure that they are saying that it's disease free. I mean, anybody can put anything on, on eBay or on Amazon now. I mean, and people do. You don't want to be creating a, a lifelong problem for yourself by buying something that's not certified. It's going to cost you more money, but it's going to cost you less in the end. Don't plant seed given to you by a friend or from the supermarket for the same reasons. Your friend may not know where they got that seed from, or maybe they got it from the supermarket. And the supermarket garlic is fine to eat, but you just don't know if it harbors some disease and you don't know where it was grown. It may not make it through the out cold winter. And then so you just have to understand the cycle of disease and your cultural practices to reduce it, any kind of disease issues. So back on that botrytis thing, um, or, or was it, Yes, yeah, so with tritus, I believe um, you don't you don't want to water too much in the spring. Uh, what comes out of the sky is probably sufficient. Plants are incredibly um, crafty about getting the nutri the the soil the the water that they need from the soil, even when you think it might be um, dry. And I always like to point out that we are born with this great water. Uh, measurement tool It's your finger. If you stick your finger in the soil and it feels moist, you do not need to water. This is really your best bet. And as I said, those roots go very deep. They're going way below the soil profile. You won't even be able to tell if it's, if it's, um, if it's not, if there's not enough moisture in the soil, if your plants are looking healthy and happy, just leave them alone. They're going to do fine. So your reputable sources for garlic, you can order them online. I always order from the main potato lady. Um, last year, she ran out on me on one of the varieties that I really love. She had Enchelium Red. I had put in an order and she ran out. She probably was filling her bigger uh, purchasers first. And I wound up 
not being able to get the size garlic I want. I got table stock, which was really minuscule. And I was really, really sorry. I wasted a lot of money on that. Uh, but she does test her garlic for these three, um, the garlic bloat nematode, the white mold, and the botrytis. And her bulbs are minimum two inches uh, in diameter. No, in, yeah, in diameter. I always get those two confused. And you can certainly go to her website at the main potato lady.com and see what she's got left. I think she's only got Russian red left. And I, I grew that once I wasn't thrilled with the storage ability of it, but you know, if you're not going to grow like 700 heads, like I did that one year, it's not going to be a problem for you. You'll eat it. You'll give it away. You'll have, you'll have uh, probably plenty of uh, you won't have to wait about wait for it to months in and find out it's not holding. We have a local option this year uh, and we had it last year. And this is where your garlic came from. This beautiful music garlic, which is just really beautiful. I'm so thrilled with it. I'm so glad they're finally doing this is a restoration farm in Old Beth Page. Um, Dan and Caroline have been farming there since 2007. It's right on Long Island. Uh, and years ago, she would I would say to her, Caroline, I would love to plug you because I love to use local whenever possible. I know it's going to survive in our area because it's just down the road from me, but you know, I need to really, I need to know it's tested because I'm always on my soapbox about this. And so for the last two years, she's been sending it up to, I think she sent it out to Michigan state university and she tests it for all three of those other ones. Plus fusarium. Um, she, it's not cheap. You know, you're going to spend, uh, probably $30 for 20 to $30 for a pound of it, but it's, it's great garlic and you'll get, you know, every clove makes a head. So it's plenty of garlic and maybe you could share it up with friends. You can order it online, but then you got to pay shipping. And I highly recommend you go to the gar garden, go to their garden and see what they're doing there. They're just amazing people. They they've really done a great job. <sighs> Sorry. Come on. Okay. So to harvest your garlic, you're going to want to harvest it whenever you can harvest it. So you could, like I said, in mid spring, you can harvest it as green garlic. Uh, you can harvest those garlic scapes over the hard neck variety in June. And it's very edible and tasty. And if you're not going to use them right away, you can always chop them up and throw them in the freezer and then break them out. You know, when you don't have garlic, maybe now. Um, there's lots of great things you can do with them, the garlic scapes. Uh, and it's an ephemeral thing. You're only going to get them for a few weeks. You, you probably see them at farmer's markets, but never in the supermarket. Maybe a local farm will have them. Uh, and they're really delicious. They're milder than garlic when they're cooked, but they're very, very strong raw. And they look, uh, it almost looks like a, um, well, you saw the picture. It almost looks like a, like a, like a, a scallion, but it, it's, it's just a single um, flower stalk. And then of course, in mid July, you're going to early in mid July, you're going to, you're going to harvest your garlic. Now, if you look at this garlic in this field, you can see that those, some of those leaves are turning brown and that's about when you're going to want to do it. If you leave it in the ground too, so, too long, like I said, it may start to break apart onto the ground and it's going to be impossible to pull that head up and forget about curing it. I mean, you could probably dig in the ground and pull them up and clean them off and, and eat them, but you're not going to be able to cure it for later use. Green garlic, as you mentioned before, this is what it looks like. It's the un, uh, undifferentiated head of garlic. No cloves there yet. And these are the garlic scapes. So on the picture on the left is when I would harvest my garlic scape. And I'd snap it right down at the base where those other strappy leaves are coming up. That's where I would snap it. The very part at the top where it starts to turn yellow, you could just cut that off. That's actually the flower head. I don't think you want to cook with that or anything. And then on the right, you can see where the garlic is now starting to get to the point where it's beyond um, use, use as a garlic scape. Um, this is, you can actually see that the head is kind of starting to swell a bit. It's gonna open up, insects are gonna pollinate that, and then um, it'll become a garlic flower and it'll make those bubbles. Uh, if that's what you wanna do, that's great. But really most farmers who are growing garlic will snap that off at the stage where I have it on the left. And that's to keep the energy in the bulb, not to give any more energy away. This is what garlic looks like. And as I said before, look at the root system on that, right? That's a pretty long root system. So you want, if you're going to grow it in a container, you want at least, I would say at least 16 inches, 18 inches of depth. 
So when you harvest your garlic, you might be tempted to just go and pull it out, but that's probably not a great idea depending on what your soil is like. Maybe it's very soft and it's going to be easy to do that, but you'll want to use a fork to loosen the soil. And I always like to look at where my garlic is and it's very clear where the garlic is. And I always like to go about six inches away from where that garlic stem is because the garlic bulb is probably not going to be bigger than three inches. So I'm giving myself plenty of, um, uh, of a wide berth there, not to actually stick a fork into my garlic. Because if you stick the fork into the garlic, you can still eat it, all the cloves that you have it ruined, but you won't be able to cure it. I like to harvest when there's dry weather, preferably before wet weather. So, and the reason for that is that you'll have less soil on the plant. So it's going to be easier to clean it. When you clean your garlic, you're going to basically if you pull it up and it has soil on it, sometimes it's unavoidable. You're going to have to harvest it. It might be wet and that's, that's okay. But try to always try to do it before wet weather comes. Um, I always just like to kind of tap very gently on my hands to remove any soil that's already loose. And that's basically all I do. I don't want to bang it. I don't want to drop it in my bucket because they're like eggs. You, you're going to dent, dent it. And that curing process is not going to help take care of the damage that you've done. And if anybody knows anything about vegetables, when you have a vegetable that's starting to go south, it puts out ethylene, which is gonna make everything else go south. So you, you really wanna not speed up that decomposition process by causing any damage to your garlic. Um, if you have an imperfect head, say you did stab one by mistake, or oh my gosh, you dropped it, you can just use those first. The garlic that you get when it's fresh is going to be fabulous. There's no reason you can't eat it right then. But what you're going to find is these, these papery wrappers that we find on garlic that's been cured are going to be thicker. They're going to be fleshy. So you're going to have to peel down quite a bit to get down to the, that nice um, edible portion of that clove. Um, when you dry it, you're going to put it in a cool, dry, shaded place. You do not want to put your garlic in the soil. I mean, in the sun, there's volatile oils in here that will heat up and it will wind up damaging your, your um, garlic and you won't be able to keep it. Um, you can hang it. Uh, and I'm going to show you some images of how you can dry it. You can lay it on a, uh, I, I usually use these bins that are just, you know, harvest bins. And I just lay them kind of in a, in a way so that they have some, they're not right up against each other. And then I just keep flipping them over back and forth in that bin for a couple of days. And then eventually they go into maybe a paper bag because the paper will help absorb any moisture. Um, and then I have to keep them away from my cats because they absolutely love it. I went to take this down. This is one of my garlics that I grew this year. I went to go take this down. The cat was like out of nowhere. I was already jumping on this. He likes to eat this stuff. The other one likes to lay all over it. So I try to keep it away from them. Um, so here's an example of how you can just, uh, if this looks like a soft neck, maybe, oh no, it's probably not. It may not be a soft neck. Just tie the tops and hang them over some dowels, give them some space and good airflow. You can put a fan in that space. It's a garage. That's fine. Any place that's not hot and sunny and is dry. It doesn't have to be bone dry, but it can't be having rain. You can't have water landing on your garlic. Um, this is sort of my method. I kind of sometimes, well, when I had 750 clove heads, which was just pure insanity, you looked anywhere, you looked in my yard, my front porch, any place I had a covering, I had garlic laying out on saw horses across like that to dry. Um, this is another method. And this is a little ingenious method of repurposing a rack. Um, any way you want to do it, you can hang them upside down. You can hang them with the bulb down. It doesn't really matter. One of the most important things to know, though, is you need to leave all that green growth on there. You do not want to take that off. That's all part of the curing process. Um, if you cut that too soon, what's going to happen is this might still be somewhat um, moist because this, this was green. You know, it almost looked like a, a corn plant, right, or something along those lines, a lily plant green strappy leaves the first few leaves are going to die back but the rest of the plant is going to be still pretty green if you cut that too soon what's going to happen is that moisture is going to allow um you know some kind of any kind of bacteria can get in there and mess up your curing process so you definitely want to dry it down i really i mean i haven't even cut this yet i harvested this in in july i don't have a lot to deal with this year so I'm, i didn't have a great garlic crop myself 
because I, I stupidly thought I was going to plant it in that garden again. And that garden betrayed me once again, because I made that mistake many years ago when I planted garlic that wasn't tested. So I'm living proof of why you want to make sure it's tested. Um, but really six to eight weeks, once it's completely dry, you can cut it right down to about an inch from the top, just like that. And then I usually also take this part and I usually cut that off as well. And I, I'm using some nice Felco um, pruners, which are the best pruners you'll ever get. If you ever want to get pruners, these are the ones to get. Always make sure you get the holster. So you don't put them on the ground and lose them. I've had these for like, oh my gosh, I've had these for like 15 years now. I never lose them and they're red. So if you're not colorblind and you, 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 you lose them, you're going to find them because they're red. Um, and I'm not getting any money from, Fit, from Felco, by the way, but I just, this is a great tool. Um, going to keep your garlic in a cool, dark place. Uh, and then if you do have any sprouting clothes, clothes that are starting to sprout in any green, and that'll happen probably in February, March, you're going to want to use those first. They're perfectly fine to use. They're not going to be the most robust garlic in the world, but they're completely edible and okay to use. And you don't have to cut the green off, just throw it in there. It's like basically eating green garlic with the garlic. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm happy to open it up to questions. Before I, I, I take questions though, I just wanna point out, this is Restoration Farms. This is the image they have on their website. They are really excellent growers. They're excellent farmers. They're growing organically. They're not certified organic, but they are uh, definitely uh, true blue to that, uh, that print, those principles. And um, that's pretty much it. I'm going to stop sharing. And then if um, you want to ask a question, I'm happy to answer. Um, okay. So how do I, do I just, oh, I just raised my hand. Okay. Okay. So let's see. I got to find you, Charles. Oh, I'm not sure if I can, oh, here, attendees. Got it. Okay. You should be able to speak now. You had a question? Charles? Oh, you're muted. I'll unmute you. I can't unmute you. You have to unmute yourself. How's that? There you go. Great. The um, video you showed said not to separate the cloves from until the you plant. Until we're planting. Correct. However, the, they came from the library as cloves. Yes. Is that but going she, to be a problem? Oh, well, that's because she had to break up heads because everybody wasn't getting ahead. But if you grew your own, if you were buying your own garlic and it came like this, you would want to wait until you're ready to plant that day, day before. And the reason for that is, of course, the minute you take it off of the rest of the head, um, it's going to it's going to be open to the elements and it may speed up decomposition and you want it to be as fresh as possible to put in the ground. Now I gave Heather, um, God, I gave Amber those bulbs whole. So I'm sure she didn't break them up until right before she gave them out. Yeah, but that was got, I got those, if like, we were uh, in, if we were in our classroom setting, we would have probably done it the day before. It's been like two or three weeks now that I've had them. Though. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't worry about it. You're going to okay, be Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I believe we broke them up. It, it was um, the day before they were available for pickup, so October 7th. So it's only been, I think everybody picked them up on the 8th. So they were broken up the day before. So yeah. we're looking at, you know, less than a week here. So yeah. that's that's pretty good. Yeah, and I'm sure if you were a commercial grower and you're growing acres and acres of garlic, they're not waiting till the day of <laughs> to plant to break it up. The point is, don't break it up a cup, you know, don't break it up a month ahead of time. Say, oh, I got all my garlic, and you know, you can buy cloves. I would never buy cloves myself because you're not, you may not be getting the best of the best of the head. You know, you might be getting the smaller cloves, and you, when you buy a head of garlic uh, from a reputable seed person you're going to be able to see what you will and will not plant. Now you might want to plant every one of them. You don't care what size they'll be, but if you're limited in space, you want to plant the biggest ones and then eat the other ones. So, and they will hold a long time because remember these were just harvested in July. So this is very fresh garlic. I mean, I can, I can tell from 
because I have the same garlic because I bought it too from Restoration. It's in great shape. I'm sure it's, I'm sure you'll be fine. Uh, Regina, we do have a question. Debbie is raising our hand, so I'm going to allow her to talk. And then okay. I know we have some questions in the chat as well. Sure. So. I actually put a couple of questions in the chat, so. <laughs> oh, good. Perfect. I saw that. Okay. Um, so a couple of questions I had. One is I recognize that flower. I planted it. I guess I planted garlic like three years ago. Is it still, <laughs> is it too late to harvest that? So you planted garlic two or three years ago. It's probably grown and gone back down into the ground, correct? Yes, because I keep seeing that flower every year and didn't realize what it was. Yeah. I wouldn't harvest it now. Just leave it and then come the spring. If it's not in a, if it's in a space that's now, remember now, because you didn't separate the cloves, they're all close together, right? Right. It's a little clump. I would harvest it as green garlic in the spring if you don't like it where it is. I mean, it's not going to get, you're not going to get a head of garlic when they're planted that closely because they're competing, all those cloves are going to be competing for those nutrients. So I, if I were you, when it comes up in the spring, gets to a decent size, I would just get a shovel and I dig it up and I would use it as green garlic. Okay. Another question I had was, um, can you use your own garlic as seeds if you're growing the garlic? Okay. So th this is uh, this is a good question. If you do not, I personally wouldn't. I think that was my mistake. I think one year I bought the garlic and it was fine. And then I saved my seed because it was expensive and I planted it again. Some of these diseases can be, um, some of these diseases can take a while to accumulate in the plant, in the bulb. And because you're, you, you don't know how, what the time frame is on that, you might wind up with a problem down the road like I have now. Um, unless you send it out to test it, a sample of it to test it, I'm sure it's not inexpensive to test, then you can, or you can just take the risk. Or if you're planting it in a container and you're not gonna plant in that container again, sure, plant it again. But personally, my own opinion is I would never do that again. I'm never going to save my own seed again because I don't, unless I bought it from a reputable place and I know my soil is free of those problems. But if I were going to plant my own garlic again, I would probably get it tested before I planted it again. And they, they don't test every single bulb, clearly. They take a percentage of the field they send it out and it's, 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 a, it's extrapolation. You know, they extrapolate out. They, they basically figure out, well, if this head doesn't have these, all these heads don't have it, then there's a very high percentage it's not going to have it. And then my last question is for Amber. Um, I just signed up tonight. Is it still possible to pick up garlic? Uh, yes, I do have um, garlic. So if you go ahead and register, um, I'll have it at the reference desk for you tomorrow morning. Okay, yeah, I registered this evening, so. Perfect. Um, just give us until about um, 11 o'clock to pull that and put it. Okay. Yeah. That'd be 11. Thank you so much. Oh, you're, you're welcome. welcome. Okay. You have a couple of more um, hands. Should I? I'll do it. All right. Um, oh, no. Wrong person. Sorry. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Fantastic. Enjoyed your whole program tonight. Great. So, Terrific. Very happy. Cool. That you did. I'm very, so, I'm just happy to give this program. My question is, is what is a great soil to buy that is rich and what kind of soil do you use and what supplements do you use for the soil? Oh, soil. Okay. So, um, are you planning to plant in a container? Is that why you're getting soil? Are you starting a new garden bed? Well, I have two planters and I have containers, but because this is going to be um, it, uh, taking a very long process to do, I figure I give uh, each uh, each garlic on to put uh, individually into a planter okay. because uh, you know with other other items you grow, it takes three four months and you're done. This one is, we're putting it now, right. but we can't harvest it till next July. Correct. Correct. Or you could, yeah. but you can still plant things. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, no, you're right. You're, you're going to just plant garlic and that's fine. Yeah. Um, it, it's not like if you're planting spinach or zucchini, it, it doesn't take the same time frame. So I figured I'd give it its own planter. So perfect. Yes. E each clove I would put into each planter so it has enough room. So, you know, I have enough planters, so I, I don't mind doing each clove in each planter. 
Okay, but if you if you only have two cloves, you could just plant them in the same planter. Oh, you can't. Why not? Well, I I've never done this in my entire in my entire life. Right. So it's only you're only planting them four to six inches apart. So it's gonna take a very little space. Okay. So I wouldn't dedicate a whole planter. I don't know how big your planters are, but I wouldn't okay. dedicate a whole planter to one clove of garlic. Got it. But the question is. Um, what type of rich soil do I buy and where can I buy it? And then what type of supplements do I need to do? Okay. So if you buy soil, um, you want to try to find some good topsoil. Um, where is there a good source? Mm. Well, let's put this you way. Go to I, already have, I already have the topsoil and I already have, um, what do you call it? The, the, the regular uh, uh, dirt in there. But I know right now that it's low in either magnesium or, or, or phosphorus or nitrogen. So I, need a, I know I need to get a good rich soil, but I don't know what is considered rich soil. You know, well, I don't know which brand to buy, which is right. considered a rich soil. Well, I would say you don't really need soil. You probably need something like compost. I mean, and unless you test your soil, I don't know how you know why I did I had I well from the plant not not from the plant not from I apologize I had my two planters tested but I didn't have all the pots tested so in one planter it needs nitrogen phosphorus and calcium and then the other one I think was just phosphorus and and nitrogen but I haven't had the the actual like containers tested now where could I get a good compost uh, well, Home Depot sells compost. Um, you, what you're looking for is uh, compost that maybe says it's organic. Yes, are you talking about like the Nature Care? Yes, um, I would. And it, as far as topsoil, and this is something that I would just uh, potting soil, just in general, I, I would avoid my Miracle Grow. Um, I've had people tell me they've had Miracle Grow, even the organic, and it's it's not great soil. Yeah, you know, it's some neighbor of mine talked me into doing that and I did it and I didn't find it wasn't a great produce compared to the nature's care. Yeah, so go for, you know, go for the best. So yeah, so Lowe's or Home Depot, they have it. There are garden centers that might sell it. I don't, I don't know. I'm not familiar with your garden centers there, but I can tell you like uh, here in Huntington, we have Machinations uh, Poultry Farm. He sells, he sells. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Matt. Wait, is that the one off of Cuba Road or yes, something? Yes, yes, yes. He sells Mac and Rose soil, which is excellent, which is, I use the potting mix to start my seedlings. Okay. And he also sells Mac and Rose compost. Mac and Rose is a great name and it's orga certified organic. Okay. Um, it's been listed with Omri, which is uh, organic materials uh, oh, resource something. I forgot the name, what it means, stands for, but anything that says it's organic has to have that Omri rating on it. Okay. And Mac and Row is a great option. If you can get some machinations, I would certainly go there. And there might be local ones by you that sell it. So you might want to go on Mac and Row, M-C-E-N-R-O-E. Oh, wait, I'll say it again, M-C. M-C, I'll put it in the chat, actually. M-C-E-N-R-O-E. Oh, like Mac, like John Mac and Row, the tennis player. Yes, I don't think there's an, I don't, yeah. So uh, I'm going to put it in the chat right now. Um, let me get my, come on. Can I, oh, here. Um, Mac and Row uh, compost. If you just Google Mac and Row, they're located upstate. They, okay. they, you might be able to find out what local um, garden centers sell it, but that's an excellent product. Oh, okay. Green Island, I, I don't know if you have to be a, um, you might have to be a commercial grower, but Green Island and Riverhead definitely sells Mac and Row. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. All right, um, Ellen. All right, Ellen, you just need to unmute yourself. Oh, wait, Ellen, you just need to unmute yourself. I don't think I can unmute her. Unmute. Okay. Okay. Hi, Ellen. 
All right. I, I only signed up today and um, I'm out of town. I wouldn't get home till tomorrow. So I, this is for Amber. I, can I pick up my garlic tomorrow yeah, as well? Yeah, uh, Ellen, I got your email. I registered you. So when you get back, um, your bag is at customer service with your two cloves okay. of garlic. So you, okay. you are all set. Yep. All right. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And um, I think my other question was the soil, but um, I think that question was answered based on the question with the other lady. Because I, I would just buy compost. Yeah, I would use compost too, myself, okay. I would. All right, so then I'm fine. I'm good okay, then, great. thank you. And just, and just so everybody knows, um, in the bag with the garlic is also the instructions that come from the main potato later, lady. So you can use those instructions to kind of follow Wonderful. what I went through. It should Wonderful. give you from, from planting to harvesting and curing. I believe it's all on there. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. All righty. Okay, so should I look at the chat, Amber? Or yeah, we can look at the chat. Um, I think we've had a great group tonight. Uh, really? What great questions and everything. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of the people who put questions in the chat ended up getting on and asking their questions. So that's great. Let me just take a quick look just to make sure. Okay, Lisa had a question. Um, can you use peat moss in the soil to help with drainage? Okay, so peat moss, you know, people use peat moss. I, I, I'm not a big fan of it. First, it's not a renewable resource. It's a limited, uh, finite resource. And also, if it ever dries out, it's really hard to re-wet. So, and um, I would, I think compost is your best bet. And this is the reason. Compost is going to hold six times its weight in nutrients and in moisture. But it also lightens the soil. I know it's sort of, it's anti, uh, it's kind of uh, not intuitive, but it's actually your best bet for helping your soil. If your soil is really, really heavy, you might want to consider getting perlite. You know, perlite's a um, volcanic, uh, it's, oh, what is that? I don't even know what it really would. It's, it's a natural substance. It's organic and it's white. It's if you ever bought like a, a plant, you saw like the little white, it almost looks like styrofoam, but it's not. It's like, it's like exploded uh, glass or something. It's, it, but it's gonna help with drainage because it takes up space. I wouldn't use peat moss. Peat moss is gonna add acidity to your soil as well. And it's just, I just think it's, it's kind of tricky. If, it, if your plant, if your garden, if it dries out, it, it kind of prevents the water from going any further. And you really want a, a, an equal, you know, an evenly moist growing medium. Okay, and then uh, Lisa also talked about um, contributing less to your soil. Oh, one more time, I'm sorry. Can she reuse last year's soil? Absolutely. Compost is your answer to reusing last year's soil. Last year's soil is tomorrow's soil. And you just have to make sure that it's got the nutrients that you need in it. And compost is going to add those nutrients. And the beautiful thing about compost, unlike you know, any kind of uh, formulated synthetic fertilizer is it's going to release it as the plant needs it because it, there's a chemical, and I'm not a soil scientist. I took a soil science class. I can't remember whether the, it's what's, what's charged negatively and what's charged positively, but the plant is able to pull off what it needs from compost as it needs it, as opposed to it just sitting in the soil and things like nitrogen. If you, if you just throw nitrogen in your soil, it's water soluble. What'll happen is if the plant doesn't use it and it will use it in warmer conditions, it won't use it so much in cold conditions. If the plant can't use it, it's just going to go into the soil and it's going to go into the aquifer. And then we wind up with big problems uh, just generally with that. You know, these dead zones that we see in the Gulf of Mexico, that's all runoff from farms that are using nitrogen in a synthetic form and the plant can't use it and it winds up really causing a lot of issues, environmental issues in our water. So oh, compost is your best bet. And if you're not already making compost, consider doing that. You know, there's plenty of resources online for Cornell. So easy to make. Um, you, we've got all the ingredients. If you're cooking, you have green stuff all the time to put in there. If you have trees, you have leaves. If they're dropping leaves, 
that's the best, that's your carbon and that's your um, nitrogen sources. So he's afraid of snakes. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, you, you definitely get snakes with compost. <laughs> do you? You guys do. You guys have a very interesting eco ecosystem out there. I don't know. I've never seen a snake in my compost. I might have seen other things in my compost, which well, I think I, mean, I have to turn my compost more often, but I've never seen a snake ever. And snakes are good, by the way. It's probably not a rattler or, a, you know, a diamond back. It's probably a garden, a garden state snake, which is, which are terrific for eating insects. No one's a fan of snakes <laughs> in any form or shape or location. Um, okay. I believe we answered all the questions at this yeah. point. Um, as mentioned before, Regina is great about getting back to, despite the fact she's a very busy lady, she always gets back to us with any questions that we have. So, um, if you think of anything after the fact, or we happen to miss it, just email me. Um, everybody got an email tonight, uh, with the Zoom invitation. So feel free to reach out or if next week you go to plant something, um, and you forgot, then just send me a quick email and uh, Regina, thank you so much for okay, sharing you. your knowledge with us tonight. Oh, absolutely. Uh, very cool. It's yeah, always yeah, great to fun. hear you speak, and it's great that you know about everything else besides uh, plants and garlic as well. Um, if I you know. decide you need to re-look at um, a part of this presentation, it is up on our mcpl.tv, our YouTube page. So Regina was nice enough to let us keep that up for two weeks. So you could always go back and rewatch a part of this or the whole thing if you enjoyed it. And um, we are going to go ahead and end the presentation at this time. But thank you so much for all your great questions, all your great feedback, and enjoy. Thank you, everybody. And I hope you all become gar garlic uh, converts like everybody else that's turning, buying the garlic. So take care. And thanks, Amber. I'll talk to you soon. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.